Hi, and welcome back again to Haunted Hearsay. Uh, I'm Caroline Sweeney, and I'm here in Donegal. And um, we have Ben Murphy, he's down south in Dublin. Say hello, Ben. Hi, how are you? How are you, Ben? And uh, just back with a few more stories and pictures. Um, I, I just want to hark back to the Ballymacool house again because I managed to get out there yesterday. I was another Kenny, and I decided I wanted to go looking for what was left of the woods that are there. I wanted to see if I could find the cross that this guy, boy, that shot him his horse and then shot himself was buried under. And I drove around and it's in the centre of what is, is basically a housing estate now. And there's only maybe about an acre left or maybe a hectare, sorry, not an, an acre, but about a hectare left. And I can't get over how sad that is if it was one of the oldest woods in Europe. And it had trees that are um, the indigenous that are now believed to be extinct in other parts of the world, mm. and that we had them there, and there still maybe is just a few there. I don't understand why there isn't some sort of preservation order slapped on it, and the place isn't maintained just a little. Yeah, and I, I put up, I, I sent some pictures for you as well of the house. I come in as close as well, I come in as close as I could without a pair of wellies on, because it's a sort of. Uh, it was just a quagmire again, mud and dirt and all this. I just, I went as close as I could to the house. But it's just, there's so much character. The size is unbelievable. I mean, I drove around the state to get from one side of the house to the other. And there's, and you can see where the avenue up to the house used to be. It's now the avenue into this, this housing estate. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the housing estate. It's a lovely big housing estate and obviously housing is needed, but it's just a pity that's done at the expense of losing such an historic piece of land like that, that would not even because there's bodies buried on it, but because it is one of the oldest woods in Europe and that some of the trees are of a very rare genus of trees. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to trees. I know this from reading it on the, the websites in Letterkenny regarding Bally McCool House, that's where I learned that, that information. And then going out and taking pictures and just showing it to people and thinking, that is very sad. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see, you know, anybody that live, is living in Bally McCool ever tunes in, please tell us your thoughts on this. And if you've had any experiences and what would it be like if we were to disrupt them completely by digging up the last bit vestige of whatever magic was yeah. held in that ground. I don't know that Yes, would have a peaceful life there at all. <laughs> uh, but I see you had pictures up there as well. They're very fascinating. It's an old church. That's in Donnybrook in Dublin. Yeah, so I suppose in the same vein as um, modern buildings being built around old things, mm. um, I decided to go for a little walk locally um, to Donnybrook. And Donnybrook is the next village over to what would have been a village it's all homogenized now but next village over to where I live so it's about 15 minute walk and I was I, I knew there was a graveyard there but I didn't know sort of what the story was with the graveyard so I went over yeah. I had a look and it seems very very old and I knew it was very old it's right next door to the Garda station it's across the road from near the rugby stadium yes 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 um, and in a very a cathedral or a church, or so there, there was a church there, um, and there might still be. Basically, the graveyard's closed. You can't get into the graveyard. It's and is the building opened or closed? It's like there's a gate that wasn't the original gate, and um, I'll put up a photo of that as well because there's an yeah. archway that was basically the entrance was changed. I'm not sure if there's still a, a church there. But originally, it's from 800 AD. Wow. And, and it was originally a, a Celtic. There's some really interesting things about this, this plot, right? Mm -hmm. So what I learned, uh, it's from 800 AD. Um, it's circular, which is an unusual shape for a graveyard. And that comes apparently from the Celtic. Uh, it was a Celtic burial site, probably. Or okay. So, um, so probably it could even be older than the 1200 years. It's it, it also has been both Catholic and Church of Ireland, which is interesting because that's mm -hmm. very rare for the same space to be the two denominations. Yeah. Uh, St. Brock, 
B or O C is the the patron saint, I suppose, is saint. Okay, so the thing that I thought was really, really interesting is that I read in 1877 there was um, 600 to 700 bodies found in a mass grave uh, just off Aylesbury Road. And okay. if anybody knows the Irish Monopoly board, Aylesbury Road is the most expensive road okay. in Dublin. Okay, so it's built on what was a mass it's all burial ground. These big mansions, right? So and with those bodies all reinterred. In the eighteen in eighteen, so these bodies are Viking. Viking, there was a Viking massacre. Um, oh. and they found it in eighteen seventy seven. And they dug up all the bodies and guess where they moved them to? Wow, the cemetery. The cemetery in Donnybrook. Mm. But the mass grave or the spot of the massacre, it's now called Sea View Terrace, uh, Danesfield, and it is the German ambassador's residence. Wow. So, I don't know, something, you know how they say they've dug up, they've dug up like a mass grave, but it's very possible if that was a scene of a battle that there was other areas that there was but, mass burials. Yeah, they'll be built on top of these now. They were digging up uh, to do drainage mm -hmm. in, in, in the 19th century. Um, so what else did I learn? <laughs> so basically, they found this warrior, they found a Viking warrior uh, with a sword and two women at his feet who had been sacrificed. And they also found um. So I'm getting my information from an article that I read online by a guy called Owen Megan, and we can put, I can put it down in the description below. Um, but they also found between 600 and 700 other bodies that had been violently killed. Right. Okay. And then they all got moved to this other graveyard. And the other graveyard, so the graveyard in Donnybrook that I went to, and I'll put up the pictures, they, that has... I read 7,000 bodies interned in it, but it's That's small, crazy. it's really small. So it's- yeah. not But big. you know something, the, they would have been burying bones at that stage. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, they weren't, they weren't, you know, not after that length of time from sort of the Vikings up until the 18th century, they were like, they were burying bones. That's what they dug up and, and probably and they found metal or whatever was there. They found a lot of stuff. They found swords and all sorts of things. Talking of talking of metal, hmm. I see the um, the Utah monolith disappeared. <laughs> traveled to <laughs> Romania. Uh, I'm gonna uh, go, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that there's maybe two or three of these things made by the same person, and I'd say there's bound to be one that's about going to turn up now. Say, for instance, in somewhere. Russia or somewhere like that, or well, it, what, it's going to be somewhere obscure. I don't believe it's the same people doing it. So the suit think it's a copycat. Absolutely, because it looks different. It's not as shiny and nice and perfectionist. It, whereas the first one is very like angular and nice. Yes. And uh, there wasn't that many footsteps and stuff. And in the photos I saw of the one in Romania, there was dirt around the bottom and it was kind of rough metal. So I just seen a glimpse of it, so I, I thought there's something similar, and I thought, wait and see if there'll be a few of them will appear now. In different I do parts think they will appear now. I think it'll become a trend. <laughs> I do. I think that I think that was a statement, an art statement. Yeah. Um, a bit like whenever, um, what do you call them, Orson Welles and his team, they were all sort of like movie buffs and uh, producers and directors and writers and all this sort of thing. But they were all about capturing the imagination. When they done War of the Worlds on the radio in America, they did it as if it was actually happening. And oh, yeah, people yeah. all over America panicked. It was I, people I, running into the streets thinking that America was being invaded I, by I, aliens I, from outer space. They, they played their part so well. Yeah. I think it's the same sort of thing, only a more visual. I think it's the same sort of thing. I get, I'm, I, that's what I'm getting from it anyway. So oh, I, also yeah. want, I wanted to say that I decided to download an app um, and it's called Ghost, Ghost Hunter 
M2. And basically it has uh, a load of different tools on it. And I'd be, I'd be kind of skeptical uh, of how well an app might work. And I'm, we're not ghost hunters. No. But what I, what, the reason why I did it was because I want to go down to the German embassy with it uh, to, I obviously won't be able to go into the German embassy, but I live you close to I, well, maybe, but that's good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what, what would, where would be the harm in asking? Do you know what? I'm doing a podcast. I would be very interested if I could step inside the door for a minute and do, you know, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, the TV Something like you, yeah, you're very welcome. Well, we could next time, at a minimum, I'd like to go to the graveyard, uh, to the outside of the graveyard because it's locked up. Uh, yeah. just to see if there's a difference, see if anything. And the re it's basically the app was the best one I could find. I did some research. People seem to say it works. There's lots of tools. It's developed by engineers. Uh, I, I don't mind going to these locations during the day. It's like, you know, see the, this thing of going to a location at night in the pitch dark and using all sorts of things to, I don't need that proof. Yeah. I already believe. <laughs> yeah. I don't need that proof. I don't sleep in my house without a hallway light on at night. <laughs> yeah. So this this ghost hunting thing, no, I can do it during the day, no problem. But yeah, I'm not into curious it. that the, there was a slaughter of six hundred to seven people, seven hundred people in a pretty populated, uh, most expensive residential street in Dublin. <laughs> Um, but you know something MP. that would have been even back a hundred years ago that was very much outside the city and it was the country yeah actually true. even that's back in really. the 80s Donnybrook was still kind of the country compared to the city I lived in Dublin in the early 80s and, uh, and now it's a lot more built up but I still remember Donnybrook being a village in the early 80s so you can imagine a hundred years ago that was really the outskirts of Dublin so it was a much quieter, you know, it wasn't a built up place the way it is now. So but that's yeah. definitely something we've got to do a bit more investigating into and see is there any, has there any been any noted events or happening? There has to have been. There just can't, can't be that many people displaced and there not to be some sort of energy from it at least. Mm -hmm. Um, also, it's next door. It's always had a really sinister feeling when you drive by this particular yeah. backyard. It's next door to the Garda station and it's kind of dreary and uh, it's this tiny little arch. Um, I wonder if the guards have ever experienced anything there. That would be well, interesting. I've been, I've been there, there. It's grim. It's a grim Garda station. I also, but I mean, if you were to ask the guys that work in the place. Yeah. That would be interesting because, you know, I mean, I would... I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised that they would have some sort of stories. Yeah. It's worth it. It's, it might be <laughs> worth sending an email to the Germans as well. Yeah, I would give I would give that a go. I wouldn't dismiss. That's but, one thing uh, I would find um, specifically with Europeans more so, I think, than Irish, English or Scottish um, or even Welsh. We're all a lot more suspicious of each other, but Europeans are much more. Yes, you'd like to inquire. Oh, absolutely, come. You know, they're much I, more welcoming on things like that. To them, that's things like that are not a big deal. Well, you know, you're asking the ambassador if you can, like, use an iPhone app inside their residence. It's kind of a bit strange, but we we can figure out a, an angle. <laughs> Maybe sure. it's just me. See, I don't think that's cheeky. <laughs> I'm looking at the world through rose tinted glasses at the moment because it's coming up to Christmas mm -hmm. and coming up to Christmas we're going to uh, cover a few of the uh, sort of Nordic, uh, Icelandic and sort of Northern Europe, European traditions for Christmas that have a much darker element than ours do. I mean the most the scariest person we had coming around when I was we from Santa Claus was wee Willy Winky and if you weren't in bed by the time wee Willy Winky came around like you know I've never heard of Santa Winky. did you know I used there was a wee song where wee Willy Winky would run through the town anyway it doesn't matter but that was the scariest thing we had and he would tell Santa if you were awake and being bold or whatever I used it on my boys as well like you know it works yeah. not so sweet and um but that was the scariest thing as I say we had you go into these European, North European and, uh, you know, the sort of colder countries, mm -hmm. you know, sort of going up into this sort of like Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, all the, you know, they don't feel, this guy Krampus, he's not good. 
and yeah. the trolls they're not good he beat yeah. it over the head apparently yeah that's i mean why in under god would they introduce something like that to children that's yeah. it's interesting but, because we can do the research and find out and then tell. Well, that's it. now, that's exactly yeah. what we're, I was, we're going to do. And we're going to bring that up now in the next couple of weeks, just to sort of look at the way other people treat the Christmas tradition and why some people have a darker side and tradition to it. Because let's face it, most of our Christmas traditions come from uh, Europe, come from Central Europe, mm -hmm. predominantly uh, Germany and uh, well, Germany predominantly. <laughs> uh, before then, I don't know who was doing the Christmas well, trees. Reindeers yeah. are on North Pole. That's all Finland, isn't it? Yeah, Finland, and uh, yeah, but Germany. The the um the whole, whole idea of the Christmas tree and the lights and the decorations is very much its origins are in Germany, mm. and then sort of yeah, your reindeer and your elf villages and things like that are all up around elf, yeah. Finland and things like that and Lapland. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually doing a bit of homework in that and seeing what we can come up with. Yeah. Um, I know what we've had a wee look at a few things already and it is quite dark. So mm. we'll have to find out why such dark origins. Exactly. Um, but um, I'd like to see, are you going to go back to this church and see what else you can get about it? Or? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to go back, I think, um, and I'm going to record the EMP thing on my phone. So it's got EVP as well, which is the voice phenomenon. And I want to tell you a little, but I practiced the app in my head. Okay. I got scared and I gave up. So really? Is it working? Well, so one of the features on it is EVP, which is, you might have seen it before. You watch more ghost hunting programs. but oh, I watch them constantly. <laughs> so it's a thing that has, it runs through words or it like picks up on actual words. Yeah. It uh, uses an algorithm to identify word and it says the actual words that it's picked up on so uh, i was like just sitting right here i was like is there anybody there and corridor came up after a few seconds and i was like oh that's weird and then but like then this i was like this is in your own apartment this is in my <laughs> own apartment i know so i was like oh because i have a card my apartment's basically yeah, it does, yeah. in a corridor and another room so it's like oh no um, so then I was like, oh, I was like, who's there or whatever. And it said, it said something about a daughter and it said something about Amy and it said something about suburbs. And I was like, all right, I'm going to turn this off now. Cause I'd rather not delve too deep into, cause I don't live in a very big apartment either. So, uh, no, you don't, but you can't ignore it either. For just for today, I'm going to ignore it, and yeah. I draw, I'll go down to Donny Brook, and I'll I'll find the Vikings that were slaughtered, uh, and I'll go down to the graveyard. You'll deal with that a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if, if you do have someone in your house, it could be something to do with them, whether it's Pearson. Maybe does he have a daughter Amy? <laughs> in the suburbs, uh, I'm wiping in my that. corridor. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, I'd... Uh, well, there's something I'm dying to see the results in. I have to see this. Yeah. this is, I, I'm really fascinated I with this. I record the app. So what I'm going to do is I'll go down and there's lots of different tools. So I'll, I'll try out all the tools and then we can put them up yeah. on the screen and uh, I can show you what came up and that might be a bit of fun. Yeah, I'd say that would be a bit of fun, all right. It's, I'm curious to see. Yeah. It would be interesting to see. I'd love to see something like that up around um, the Valley McGill house. I mean, I'm definitely going yeah. back into it. Yeah, but we're def we've got a lot to cover once we can get a bit mobile. I have a few people to go and visit mm -hmm. once I can uh, exactly. to get a few stories, especially about the island. We haven't even, I mean, we put the pictures up what, last month the month before of the 10 most haunted places in Ireland. We're still going to discuss them, but we're sidetracked every Tuesday and Thursday with something else. At the moment, uh, I've got the uh, Ballymacool houses over and over and over. And there's just so much to do and so much to learn about it. And getting something like that up, if you can get up, we get out there, mm -hmm. appropriately attired and wellies and proper, you know, like six the, the, the bushes over there. This can be a dry run uh, before Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> down at the thing, the graveyard. 
uh, and the embassy. So I'm going to do both of those and put them out. And the other thing is I tested the app, the electromagnetic thing. Mm. Um, and like I moved it towards my electric devices, like my laptop and my charger and different things. And it did actually spike when I moved it towards. Yeah. And so it does. See, and that, that's the kind of thing that I was talking about the time we were doing the, the ley lines. There are some things that are basically could be from cables or wires or natural. I'm not sure how you would, what would the terminology would be underground. You would have to rule out electromagnetics in that particular area. You would have to, to rule that out. But you see, I think then there's a connection between that and ley lines. Yes, probably. Um, but then, you, I mean, yeah, so they can, but they can harness it artificially with these apps that you have. and. Well, that, it's interesting if they can. Yeah, very, um, very interesting. It seems to have pretty good reviews online. Um, so, and I paid for it, so uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't too expensive. But uh, we'll test it out, and maybe someone else might want to download it if they think it's good uh, based on what we've done with it. So, it will be the guinea pigs and tell you whether it's worth it or not. Yeah, two nights. Yeah, definitely not for that. Listen, thanks everyone for tuning in again um, and listening to us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Even if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I keep telling that to my son Edward. Even if you don't want to watch it, just get in and like it. <laughs> just do us a favor. We're not yeah, just like it, you know. It's one, sense. it's one sense, people, for every like. <laughs> just like it. <laughs> right, okay. Thanks very much. And we'll see you on Thursday. All right, Ben, good night. Talk chat to you on Thursday. Caroline, talk to you soon.